Welcome back to the weekend, everyone. Donald Trump's 2016 election interference trial. Well, it resumes tomorrow morning with a very key witness. Multiple sources, multiple sources have confirmed to NBC. Michael Cohen will take the stand. And his testimony over a hush money payment to Stormy Daniels is expected to last multiple days. In addition to Cohen, the prosecution plans to call one more witness before resting its case. But who exactly that other witness will be, it remains a mystery. Joining us now to discuss it all are folks you know very well, former senior member of the Miller Probe and MSNBC legal analyst Andrew Weissman. He co-hosts MSNBC's podcast, Prosecuting Donald Trump. They have a webby. <laughs> and Lachlan Cartwright is here, special correspondent for The Hollywood Reporter. He doesn't have a webby, but he's got the tea. <laughs> so, so, Andrew, you, you have, for the duration of this, uh, offered up a master class uh, for anyone who's been following uh, the numerous trials here, I, I just I sit at your knee on a lot of this stuff because you, you bring the elements of insight, experience and understanding to make it clear for us what we're looking at. I want to play for you uh, Michael Cohen since he is the, uh, the guy on point starting tomorrow morning. He was on our program back on April 13th. This is what he had to say about himself as a narrator of a story. Just because the media wants to portray me as the key witness, I don't care what they call me. That's what I am. I'm the narrator of the story, the narrator of the story that's going to be explaining the documentary evidence as well as the corroborating testimony. The facts and circumstances are what they are. And again, it will come out at trial. And again, I am merely, along with a dozen other people, I'm just a witness. A narrator, a witness, despite the drama leading up to his appearance uh, tomorrow with the judge having to tell uh, the prosecutors, please tell him to shut up. Uh, what, how do you see him? Do you see him? Is he a narrator at this point? Or is a lot of that narration already in place and he's just kind of the exclamation point? Hmm. Well, it's a, that's a great question. I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, we obviously have a lot of evidence already establishing uh, the two aspects of the case, sort of the election fraud conspiracy and the cover-up. Having said that, I think that Michael Cohen will give very interesting details, some important direct evidence as opposed to circumstantial evidence directly from his conversations uh, with Donald Trump. Uh, particularly at the time that he makes the payments in October of 2016, and then also the reimbursement scheme, which is really the heart of the case, uh, at which I think he's going to say he explained to and discussed with Donald Trump. Uh, and for that, although there is sort of corroboration, what I used to say is around the edges, the actual conversation is really just going to be between Michael Cohen and Donald Trump. So. I think the key thing here is if I'm, you know, if you want to know sort of what I'm looking for, it's not going to be really on direct examination. He'll be fine on direct examination. I really think it comes down to how much he keeps his cool on a cross examination. There was an interesting detail. I mean, one, I, I want to get your sense of you know who that other witness is going to be other than Cohen, but then this from Politico about Alan Weisselberg. The judge wanted to know if either side had subpoenaed him, but neither has. Trump's lawyers then looked visibly concerned that the judge proposed discussing bringing Weisselberg into court, although it would initially be outside the presence of the jury. Any sense uh, of who that additional witness is? Well, we know it's probably not Dylan Howard, who's the editor-in-chief mm -hmm. of uh, American uh, media, and um, my former boss, who has cited the spinal injury not to be here. Um, you know, there's been speculation that it could be Keith Chiller, the um, former Trump bodyguard. But I think Cohen is, is really important this week because he's the connected tissue right. between David Pecker, you know, the, the former CEO of American Media, Dylan Howard, as they're doing these catch and kills, and then with Donald Trump. So we've had all this laid out in forensic detail from uh, both David Pecker, who was the first key witness, over to Keith Davidson and over to Hope Hicks and, and so on. But the person who can sort of weave all this detail together is, is Michael Cohen. And to Andrew's point, it really is going to be, you know, what happens on cross? And I think back to Stormy Daniels this past week, being in the court, and, and she had everything thrown at her. She had the nuts 
months. She had the slots and, and she was able to respond cool, calm, collected under pressure. She's extraordinarily disciplined. And, and, and I think if Michael Cohen could be as disciplined as that, then his testimony the will be The if there is doing a lot of work. To this. Lachlan. I mean, he, <laughs> the, if, the if is heavy uh, in, in that sentence. I guess uh, to take a look ahead a little bit. So Michael Cohen testifies. He could be on the stand a day. But it's not going to be a day. He'll probably be on the stand, what, two days, maybe three. A week, yeah, potentially. Uh, you, think all, you think all week. It's, a, well, it's, a, short, it's a short week, so we're not sitting on Friday because of Barron's uh, graduation. We obviously have Wednesday and there's off. there's no Wednesday, I, yeah. I expect, I expect Cohen to be up all, all week, including the cross. Mm, okay, so if he's up all week, then there's a cross. And then the prosecution says they have one more witness. And then what happens after that? Tell the people at home. Give a little forecasting to the folks. So when the state rests, it is time for the defense, if they want to put on a case, to put on a case. Uh, you know, it remains to be seen. Every trial I've, almost every trial I've done, the defense uh, beforehand says, oh, judge, our, our defense case will be a week, two weeks, and it's usually zero. Um, mm. So, you know, I wouldn't expect a terribly long case, but you, you never know. Uh, sometimes they do something uh, very small, which is, um, let's say they have a witness who said something that the defense says was inconsistent when they were interviewed by, uh, let's say, the FBI or the state prosecutors. So they can sort of prove that up. They can call an agent to the stand to testify about what was previously said. That's a pretty low risk, but also very short uh, defense case. Um, and again, obviously, the you know, big unknown is whether Donald Trump defies the expectations that I think we all have and decides he's going to take the stand. I still think, um, you know, that if you're the state, you're thinking, great, bring it on. Um, I, I wouldn't anticipate that, but you never know. I think if we get, you know, Donald Trump up on the stand, uh, it's going to be like yesterday's rally. You know, it's going to be this freewheeling, freestyling, you know, uh, session. And I, I just don't see that happening. I mean, I'm, that would be manna from heaven for, for, for the prosecution. But uh, you know, I think that it'll be a pretty short uh, defense and then we'll get into summary. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm you know, thinking we could have a result here by, you know, just after Memorial Day, Andrew. Can yeah, I just I mean, say one other thing, Elise, because to, to Lachlan's point, um, if Donald Trump gets on the stand and does what he did at the rallies, the difference between Donald Trump's rallies and the, the courthouse and being on the stand as a witness is that he is under oath. There are penalties for not telling the truth when you are in a court of law under oath. Penalties that include jail time. I mean, much has been made about Marilyn Mosby in Maryland, but part of what she is facing is she has been sentenced because she perjured herself on the stand, right? So, uh... It, doesn't that just bolster the point that it's less likely that Donald Trump does take the stand because we cannot ensure that he will tell the truth? His lawyers yeah. can't. Yeah, plus also there's, I mean, there's cross-examination and the, this is an incredibly experienced prosecution team. Um, this is not like anything he has faced to date. Um, these people know how to cross-examine. Uh, and he has to answer. He's in front of a judge who is extremely experienced and disciplined. So he is going to be forced to answer questions and not to rattle on. Uh, you know, I again, if I were in the prosecution seat and he, he were taking the stand, I would be thinking, you know, there's this is like manna from heaven um, because there's just so much to cross examine him on. And. It, in many ways, it, he has way too much to explain in a credible way. And it also changes essentially what the jury um, has to do. Because it, instead of thinking about the cases, um, has the state proved the case beyond a reasonable doubt? It's basically you have all of this evidence on one side and you have the credibility of um, Donald Trump on the other. And it's just like, which makes more sense? Um, it's just sort of like, which would you believe? And, you know, that's going to be a tough one for the defense um, and remember, so far, there is no alternative narrative that's been laid out by the defense to explain all of the evidence that we've seen. Um, so that that is a difficulty because, you know, many people say, and I agree, that trials are really about competing narratives. But 
right now there there's no no one has actually articulated a narrative that makes any sense let alone just a coherent narrative to explain all of the evidence. Because is there a feeling that they don't need to do that? Is there a feeling that they just need to poke enough holes? They just need to create enough doubt. It wasn't about the election. It was about his family. Yes, there were phone calls, but they could have been pocket dials, right? It is the idea that if you just poke enough of those holes, you can get one person on the jury to say, I just, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced. I, I think that's right. Um, but it is useful when you're trying to poke holes to come up with some explanation. Thanks. I do also think there's another thing at work here which is, this is the former president of the United States. And it, I think that might, if you're a juror, you might normally be thinking, yes, the state has to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt. But you might sort of unconsciously think it's even higher than that. Like, I, I, I think that is something That's the true. defense has going for it.